may be somebody that I may call as a witness. Oh, no. Mr. Price. Uh, no, Judge, I'm, I'm just, listen. Okay. Here's, here's part of the problem. There is just so much information out there, and I've seen her name and some of that information that I may be cross-examining this defendant on. Mr. Price. Okay. Your, your Honor, you know we're going to object, right? She's not on the witness list. We haven't seen anything. She's not on the witness list. But she would be for rebuttal purposes or something like that. But the fact of the matter is this. Not to uh, try to coach you up, Mr. Price, but part of it is this. Perhaps you don't need, like, to carpet bomb someone if you can, and it's always preferable to use a cute cruise missile, always, as opposed to carpet bombing somebody, right? And carpet bombing people oftentimes it, it, it can very well turn into what the hey? I mean, what is the problem with this guy? Uh, I, I totally get that. I just don't want to be caught. Please you don't have enough. You don't have enough, and you need mom here. No, no, no. Is that what you're I, saying? I just simply don't want to be caught with my pants down. Easy, Mr. Price. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I, I don't get it. But, uh, Mr. Uh, Stegmeyer. Before we call the jury in, I'm going to renew my request. All right, and that's fine. And you're going to have to get, Mom's going to have to leave. Uh, okay. As much as I try, I cannot try the case for the defense or the Commonwealth, and they get, everybody gets a chance to try their own case. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, we need to separate our witnesses, and uh, Mom's going to have to step outside. Okay, and uh, I think we're ready as soon as, as soon as a couple of people get outside. Yes, Mr. Price? Exhibits, Judge. I just want to make a note of them. All right, so I think we're ready here, uh, Aaron. All right, looks like we got everybody. Welcome back. And hopefully we can move along here today and we're going to see what we can get done today and we're ho hopeful we can get this case done today. All right, uh, Mr. Stegmeyer. Yes, Your Honor. I think we're ready for the defense. Okay, and Mr. Shore is going to proceed on uh, direct examination and I'd like permission to go get our exhibit. Certainly. All right. All right, Mr. Masters, come on up. If you would stand at the podium for a second. Will you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm to testify truthfully in the course of this trial? I do. All right. Please have a seat in this chair here. It's still marked yeah. for identification, but it's not the close of a case yet. Right. Well. What? It's right in the face of the jury, Judge. What? I mean, it's right in the face of the jury. Do you believe that there's been authentication from it that the foundation's been laid from the police officers? Um, well, there certainly has. I asked him if. Oh, sure. Hang on. Um, okay, it goes like this. He. You can, you can use a diagram such as that strictly as a visual aid for someone's testimony. Okay. Uh, now, hang on. Uh, now, to admit it into evidence, there has to be, you know, it's going to be a little trickier um, because what may happen is we're going to have, I don't even know what it looks like. Okay. But apparently, we've got, best I can tell, we've got 
you know, this whole thing about you were A and somebody else is B sure. and so on and so forth. Now, when we go through this with the defendant, the defendant may say, well, now B wasn't exactly there. B was a little bit over here, so I don't know what this thing's going to look like in the end. I don't we're not going to draw on it. Oh, okay. good. We just plan on using it. To... Okay, so the point is this. I think that the, the police officer said that this sort of accurately depicts in a primitive way what the street corner looks like. Okay. You know, and then, and then it's just some diagrams of the moving parts. And, and all of it relates to the police officer's testimony. All of the diagrams on there, all of the writing over and above the street corner is based on the officer's testimony. So I don't have any problem with it, provided someone makes a motion to admit it. Right. And, and Judge, while we're up here, I'm sorry, while we're up here, I just want to make sure that you, you've heard my motion. I don't know if I said it in this form, but I'm going to say it in the form of a motion to limit any and all testimony in reference to his medical expenses and damages. For this I don't know why that would be helpful, but, um, okay. It's already been brought up that it, it, someone else has testified as his broken nose, and I think yeah. that that's, that's as far as we're going to go. Let's okay. see what happens in that, and I don't know. Um, yeah, you may anticipate. Mr. Stegmaier says you're anticipating something that's not going to happen. So that kind of solves the problem. He's going to testify he's got a broken nose, and well, yes, he got medical treatment. You're going to ask him about the amount of his medical bills or any of that? It's not a civil trial. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. And, okay. and then, Judge, you know our, object, our objection to him saying that he has a broken nose. I think that's a medical diagnosis. The police don't it's exactly a broken nose. We're well, moving on. we got to move on. Police said that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Both of them did. <laughs> All right. We're going to handle it. We're going to move on. All right. Tell me your name for the record. My name is Jonathan Daniel Masters. John, do you recall the day of December 7th, 2012? Yes. Okay. What do you do for a living, John? I'm a student right now. I'm a graduate student at Spalding University. What are you studying there? Uh, I'm studying MAT, a Master of Arts in Teaching, and I'm working on being a, a social studies teacher. Are you doing that back in December as well? Uh, yeah, it's a two-year program. Okay, I'm going to bring you back to December 7, 2012, around 6 o'clock. What did you decide to do? At 6 o'clock, I decided to go to the store to get myself a beer and a snack. Um, and that's it. That's what I decided to do. Okay. At the local uh, food mart, which is like two blocks down the road. Okay. What was the first thing you did when you walked outside of your house? As soon as I walked outside my house, um, I, I just turned to the right. Uh, it's only about like, when you walk outside my house, you turn to the right, and then you're on 4th Street, and then you go two blocks, um, and you'll cross this, this so intersection. Is Iowa Avenue located down here in this direction? Yeah, so yeah, down. yeah. M Street, yeah. It's uh, parallel with M Street. Okay. So when you got to 4th Street, which way did you turn? So when I got to 4th Street, I turned right, and then I was going north. That yes, correct. And I was on the right-hand side of the road, too. Okay. When you got to the intersection of 4th and I, what did you do? I got to the in intersection of 4th and M Street. I crossed straight across M Street uh, to the corner. To about right here, isn't it? Here? Yeah. What did you decide to do next? Then I was going to cross 4th Street. Right. And relative on this map, where's the food market going to? Yeah. It's one block away. Uh, it's the next. So you got Iowa Street, M Street, and then uh, Winkler in the food marts, the next block. Is that on the other side of the road? Yeah. Right yeah, it's on the e, uh, west, west side. Okay. And was there any marked crosswalk right here? No. Okay. Before you cross, did you check for traffic? Yeah, I checked. I looked always. I looked to the left. I looked to the right, and I even saw the the plain white car uh, that was sitting uh, on M Street you know, on the opposite side. Did that car have any turn signals on? No, it was just sitting there and it had no blinkers on. Did it appear to be getting ready to move, or was it moving at all? 
I couldn't I couldn't actually tell. I could have done one or two things. They had sat there for about a second, so they could have just sat there because uh, I didn't know what was going on. They had no blanker, so they wasn't going my direction. But since they had no blanker, I thought maybe they was going to go straight. Okay. What did the car look like? It was a plain white car. I think it was a Taurus, but I'm not for sure about that. But it was a sedan, it's a four-door, plain white car. And did you see any police sirens? There was no police sirens on it. Did it look like it might be an undercover police car? No, not at all. It was just a regular car. Just I thought it was an average citizen, just anybody okay. but the police. And did you see anybody in the car? Uh, no. I mean, I knew there was a driver, but I had no idea who was in the car and how many people was in the car. Okay. So at that point, is that when you decided to cross? Right, yeah. I looked both ways, and I saw there was no car, so then I crossed. Can you tell me what happened when you began crossing? Okay, so the traffic is, is clear, and I, and I start crossing uh, Fourth Street. And as I'm crossing Fourth Street, I only take about two or three steps before uh, the the white vehicle had actually made a, a wide U-turn. And when it made a wide U-turn, I, I thought it was just you know going to go straight. I hadn't, I didn't even see the car until it was right behind me. So I took two or three steps. And uh, the first time I saw the car is like when I see the headlights shining in front of me and I hear the car engine. And it spins right, uh, right behind me and almost hits my legs. I even have to like lean forward just so it wouldn't uh, hit my legs. Did that startle you at all? Yeah, sure. I mean, I had, you know, they almost, they almost ran me over, you know, they almost hit me with their car. Okay. Did anyone in the car say anything to you? Yeah, so uh, right after they uh, about hit me, uh, there's a, somebody from the car shouts, get the fuck out of the way. Okay, and did you respond with anything? Uh, yeah, as soon as they said that, um, I replied, fuck you. And then I kept walking. Okay, and what did the car do next? As soon as I said, fuck you back to them, they, you know, they're, they're behind me, and they almost hit my legs. As soon as I said, fuck you, immediately they spin around me, and they stop right in front of me. And, you know, it's in a busy intersection, and they stop right in front of me, blocking me from my path uh, going straight across the road. Okay. I'm going to take you back to this. When they first almost struck you, where were you approximately? I just took, like, two or three steps. I would say right, yeah, right, right around there. Okay. And when they pulled in front of you, about where did they pull in front of you? Give me sure. show you. So the car was blocking you from crossing the rest of the way? Correct. And what was going through your mind when the car pulled in front of you? I was terrified. I had no idea who these folks were. I had no idea. You know, like, it's a dangerous neighborhood. And um, it, like, like they had already said that, you know, there's prostitutes. There's, you know, I got broken into twice. It's kind of a poor, run-down neighborhood. So I had, I had no, no idea who they actually were. Um, so I was just terrified. I was, I was just scared, and I assumed that they were just, you know, just some local, um, just, I thought they was just like some thugs or some gang that was going to just jump me. Um, so I was, I was terrified. I was scared. And after they pulled in front of you, what did, what did they do next? After they pulled in front of me, um, I'm, I'm so scared because I have no idea who these guys are and what they're doing. They about hit me, they're cussing at me, and now they're in front of me and they're about to open the door. And so, you know, I'm thinking I'm just going to get jumped by some average, you know, just some local folks around my neighborhood. And uh, as soon as he pop opens the door, uh, I, I had run ahead, I had a decision, you know. I was scared, so do I run or do I stand up for myself? And so I stood up for myself. And when he opened the door, I swung a fist and I... I punched him on the, he had ducked and I punched him on the top of the head and it had, it had skidded over his head. Uh, so it wasn't even a hard hit. There was no impact to it. There was no uh, injuries from that. And I believe you testified that it was the driver who stepped out for it. Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, it was uh, Mr. Joel Casey who did that. Mr. Joel Casey, he had stepped out. He was wearing flannel and a baseball hat. So still, like, you know, I, they, there's no sirens. There was nothing on the police car. And they didn't say who they were. I had no idea who, who these people were. Did he look like a police officer? Not at all. He's wearing flannel and a baseball cap, so that's, you, that's, a, that's anybody. Did you see a badge? 
No. Okay. Did he announce that he was a police officer? No. Okay. What happened after your first swung? So, so after I swing, I hit him on the top of the head and it skits over. And uh, then, then he's coming after me. And so um, I'm, I'm squared up. 